So we're going to try, so our rational zero theorem, we got factors of the constant coefficient, which is two, divided by leading coefficient, which is one. So factors of two are one and two, factors of one are one. You can get positive or negative versions of these. So we're gonna try both positive one, negative one, positive two, negative two. So we're gonna try all four of those lambda values. And we're gonna plug it into this polynomial. Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call the polynomial P of lambda. P for polynomial. You can call it F of lambda if you really want to, but I'm gonna use P for polynomial. So now I'm gonna plug in one in for lambda into our polynomial P. And I am just looking at this inside that purple box. So I'm just referring to that polynomial right there. I'm just plugging in one for all the lambda values. All right, we got a winner right there. One is a, is a zero. So one is a solution to the, uh, to the equation we're looking for. So there is a correspondence theorem. Factors correspond to zeros. And if our zero is x equals r, or I'll use lambdas, lambda equals r, then our factor will be lambda minus r. So that should look pretty familiar if you're zero. For example, our lambda is equal to equal one here. So we got lambda equals one. That factor that corresponds to that is lambda minus one. That one easy way to think about it, it's the lambda value that would make this factor zero. So plug in one, it's pretty easy to see you get zero. All right, once we have a factor, what you can do with the factor is you can divide by it and you should have no remainder. So if we go back to the world of integers, so six has a factor of two, so I can divide six by two and get no remainder. Another factor is three, I can divide by six by three and get no remainder. So we're about to divide our polynomial P by lambda minus one. We're going to do long division And again, you can write x's if you really want to. Lambda is not very far away from being an x. If you want to use x's, just somewhere remind yourself lambda equals x, and then you'll be okay. So I don't think we're going to be using x too much in these problems. So you could use x if you really want to. All right, I'm going to multiply by lambda squared. So we're multiplying this term here by lambda squared. So that gives me lambda cubed minus lambda squared. We're always subtracting here. So the reason I did land, uh, lambda squared, so when I multiply by lambda, I get lambda cubed and I'll subtract to get zero. So that will cancel out my lambda cubed term right there. So I got negative four lambda squared plus lambda squared is negative three lambda squared. So any questions on that first uh, term right there? All right, we're gonna bring down the next term. So it's plus five lambda. What do I multiply lambda by to get negative three lambda squared? Negative three lambda. Negative three lambda. You're usually going to look down here and take one so look down here, three lambda squared, take one power less of lambda. That's generally what you're gonna be doing. So multiply through, I have negative three lambda squared plus three lambda, and we are subtracting. So I have five lambda minus three lambda is two lambda minus two. And you should, each time you should be getting a zero right here where I just wrote with purple. That was the whole point. We should be zeroing those out. So I usually don't bother writing that zero right there. So we should be getting that to cancel. 
All right, last up, what do I multiply by to get two lambda? Two, so it'll be a plus two. So two lambda minus two, subtract. Right here, we should be getting zero because we uh, divided by a factor, so we should have no remainder. So two lambda minus two lambda is zero, negative two plus two is zero. So that last term you do should come out to be zero, meaning no remainder. All right, so we have a quadratic now. You have most likely spent five years or eight years of your life studying quadratics. That was probably almost all of middle school and high school, quadratics and linear equations. Uh, so you can factor this quadratic, hopefully. I think it has nice zeros, just looking at it. All right, so finish factoring this right now. So it should factor into lambda minus two, lambda minus one. So any questions on that factoring? All right, so we have all the zeros here because zeros correspond to factors. So I have lambda equals one and lambda equals two. There's another lambda equals one. So the lambda equals one has order two. So we need to pay attention to that. All right, what we've just found are the eigenvalues. So looking back to that process, I gave you a three-step process. We did step one, find zeros of the characteristic polynomial. Those are the eigenvalues. Now what we're going to do is for each value, we're going to find the eigenspace. So we're going to find the null of a minus lambda i. So I'm going to label this somewhere. Step one, wow, it's a lot of work for step one. So all that's step one, so ready for step two. It only took uh, about half a class for step one. All right, step two. So find eigenspace, which will be E lambda, and that will equal the null of A minus lambda I for each lambda. So find eigenspace for each lambda. Okay, so let's do uh, the order one first. So we're going to do the lambda equals 2 first, and then we'll do a lambda equals 1 second. Yes, as I was saying, we're going to do 2. All right, so let's compute a minus 2 i so our a matrix is 0 1 0 0 0 1 2 negative 5 4 minus 2 times the identity so I'm gonna be lazy and just write my identity like this with big zeros so I have minus 2 1, 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 2, negative 5, 2. Now I'm being a little bit cavalier about the way I'm writing this uh, identity matrix, so you may need to write out a little more detail just to make sure you match up the corresponding coordinates as you go across. But you do en enough of these problems and you'll be able to be a little bit lazy like this as well. 
All right, null space. How do we get the null space? Set the equations equal to zero. So which equations? Set the rows equal to zero. So we'll look at the definition of null. So null of b is x such that bx equals the zero vector. So that's our null space. So we got to create an equation. Yes, it is equal to zero, but it's multiply on the left by this a minus 2i matrix and then set it equal to zero. All right, so we're just going to write in minus 2, 1, 0, 0 minus 2, 1, 2, negative 5, 2. Um, I'll just go x1, x2, x3. And this needs to equal 0, 0, 0. So there's our bx equals 0 right there. All right, solve this. How many free variables are you expecting? So if we have none, we don't have an eigenvalue. So it's at least one. So there should be, if we look back, it should be the same as the order. So we are expecting one free variable now. When we do lambda is one, we're going to hopefully get two free variables. So you should be expecting one free variable as you go. So let's line this up in a matrix. You can skip the linear equation step if you like. This is the augmented matrix right here. You can skip the writing out linear equations if you want to. Should be plus, yeah, one R one. Uh oh. So we indeed get a free variable. So that's what we were looking for, or expecting, I should say. Something's not right. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Uh, plus two R two is two plus negative one half is zero. How about that? That's better. Okay. Oh, fractions. Zero. So that's one f negative one fourth. Okay. 
All right, so questions getting to this matrix. I basically stopped writing stuff that didn't matter as well. So third row of zeros didn't matter, so don't need to keep writing it. And I know it's augmented with zeros. They're not going to change. So I told you you can be lazy and just put a vertical bar on the right side. So I basically wrote as little as I could as I went along. Well, I could have stopped writing a row earlier and a column earlier. All right, so we're going to turn this back into equations. So we got our x1, x2, x3. So x3 is free. Let x3 equal t. We have x1 minus 1 fourth x3 equals 0. And x2 minus 1 half x3 equals 0. So x1 equals 1 fourth x3. x2 equals negative 1 half x3. And now I'm just going to rewrite it with t. So you get 1 fourth t is x1, x2 is negative 1 half t, and x3 is 1 t. Can x2 be positive 1 half? So oh, yeah, it should be, yep, positive, positive. So we're going to write in vector form x1, x2, x3 equals. 1 fourth, 1 half, 1 t. And you can take any non-zero multiple of this. So I'm going to be reasonable and multiply it by 4 so I don't have fractions. All right, how many dimensions does this subspace have? So it's living in three-dimensional space. So we get one vector, one, two, four, and we can go any amount that direction or negative that direction. So how many dimensions can we move in? Here's the vector one, two, four. You can go any amount that way or any amount negative that way. So that's one dimension you can move in. You move across a line. Now, of course, it contains zero. When t is zero, this whole thing is zero. So this right here is our, uh, well, it's a null space, but in this case, it's also the eigenspace of 2. So we can write E2 in set notation. It's all multiples of 1, 2, 4. So in set notation, I can write it like this, 1, 2, 4 times t for any t you want. I can also write it in span notation. So written out in span notation looks like this. Remember, span is all linear combinations. It's a little bit silly to have a linear combination of one thing. That just means all scalar multiples. So linear combination of one element just means scalar multiples because you're not adding it to anything else really. All right, so that's E2. So I want you to find E1. So I'm going to zoom out, hopefully get all of this on the board with it still being legible. That's about as good as I can. So you're supposed to find E1 now, and I'm going to leave all this on the board. All right, I'll give you three, four minutes to do this. So you have to do that. I'll tell you what, for the first minute, I'll leave this on the board. Then the last three minutes, I'll scroll down. So you can do your subtraction. So make sure you're lining up ones in your identity matrix, not twos this time. So you're basically just repeating everything that's on the board with lambda as one. So I just circle that in purple. So make sure your lambda is one. It's a good time for questions if you have them.
many free variables are you expecting? You should get two free variables. So it should really just come down to one row of non-zeros and two rows of zeros. So according to my notes, we're only going to get one free variable. And according to my work on my paper, <laughs> we're getting one free variable as well. So I'll have to look back at that order rule. So that may not that may just be something I made up and it's not actually true. I have a different value for your for A minus identity. The bottom right I have a one instead of a three. So A was two five four? Oh, two, five, four. Oh. oh, I see. At least that's what I have for the, hopefully that's the one. I copied down for Okay, yeah. Somewhere up here, yeah. Zero, one, zero, 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 one, two, negative five, four.
So lots of ways to write the null space Here's to set notation and then the span notation, whatever you prefer. I'll take either one on your quiz or midterm. Well, there's a lot of solutions. Every solution is a multiple of 1, 1, 1. So all vectors that have the same coordinates. All right, so any questions on getting our null space here? So we're going to do one example where all we're going to do is find the well, we'll find the eigenvalues first. Maybe we'll find one or two of the eigenspaces. But just go for all the eigenvalues first. Right, this is a lower triangle matrix. How would you get the determinant? Multiply across the diagonals. Multiply across the diagonal. Now we don't need the determinant of B, we need the determinant of B minus lambda I. However, you're still gonna have a di uh, lower triangle matrix when you do that. So you need the determinant of B minus lambda I. So go ahead and subtract the lambda I from B and then find the determinant. And you can do row expansion on row one, but you can also just multiply across the diagonal and your life will go, or your determinant will go way better. Maybe your life will too. Certainly your determinant will. So I want to warn you, your brain or you have been trained and conditioned by doing algebraic operations over and over again for no real point, other than to get points from whoever your teacher was, but you were just expanding and factoring, but do I need to expand these out? What do I need to do here to find lambda? Well, it is equal to zero. So there's zero product property. Individually, each of these factors can be zero. So that's what we're using here, a zero product property. Individually, each of these factors are zero. What 
or you can just use that theorem that factors correspond to zeros. Four values, we have two, one, three, negative two. So if I write them in numerical order, negative two, one, two, three. So there's our lambda values. <clears throat> All right, we have done, we did a comp complete eigen space computation in the previous example where we found the values and then the uh, spaces and then of course I didn't mention this today but when you find your eigenspace your eigenvector is any basis vector so any basis vector qualifies as an eigenvector that's not zero uh, so in this case when there's dimension one it's just the single whatever multiple you want to use I usually use the smallest integer multiple that doesn't have fractions in it. So that's the one I always go with. Uh, if there's going to be negative values, sometimes just make, do whatever to make the first one positive. So multiply by negative one if the first term would be negative, something like that. But you can pick any non-zero representative you'd like. Um, and that would be your eigenvector. We did quite a few eigenvector and value computations, I think one or two of each, way back before the determinant section. But that was before you knew how to compute eigenvalues from scratch. So we did some of these problems previously. So I don't want to go back and do more eigenvalue, eigenvector, eigenspace computations. They all work out the same way. But that's a very good quiz question for Friday. Hint, hint. <laughs> Can't wink because I'm not being video recorded, but uh, <laughs> that could show up on your quiz. And that should be what half your homework's on from the eigenvalue or more, or probably get the eigen, some type of eigenvalue vector or space. Uh, so you should be able to compute all three from scratch now. So I'm not going to compute the eigenspace for these values, but I strongly encourage you to go home and compute the four eigenspaces right here. Now we can do a dimensional analysis. The dimension that we're working in is four. So each of these will have to have dimension one eigenspace. So they sh if you, uh, if for example, if I got, dimension two for the first one and then one for all the other ones, then I would have to have a five dimensional space or higher. So you can look at the dimension. Uh, the sum of your eigenspace, the dimension of your eigenspaces should not exceed the dimension you're working in. It's frequently less, but it should never exceed it. So our previous example, we had two eigenspaces that were each dimension one, and that was somewhere up here. So E2 had dimension one at the top of the screen and E1 at the bottom of the screen had dimension one, but we were working in a three dimensional space. So lots of times your sum of your eigenspace dimensions will be less than your total, but sometimes it equals. So here's that unique situation that was dimension four and four eigenvalues. So that means each eigenspace will guaranteed have one dimension, unless we made a mistake here. But they should each have one in this case. All right, so we're ready to move on to some neat properties. So we're going beyond just regular computations of how do we get these. So a matrix is invertible uh, exactly when lambda equals zero is not an 
eigenvalue. All right, so how would we go about showing this? So let's uh, suppose let's suppose lambda equals zero is an eigen value. So each eigenvalue corresponds to an eigenspace that has dimension one or higher. So if lambda equals zero is an eigenvalue, what that means is null of a minus lambda i, well in this case lambda is zero, so that's just null of a minus the zero matrix, which is just a. So what that means is the null space has dimension one or more. So it has one or more free variables. So it'll have dimension one or more. So it has one or more free variables. And if you remember that, back to that huge theorem of equivalent uh, properties for invertible matrices, one of them was AX equals zero has a unique solution, the trivial solution. Well, we just got non-trivial solutions right there. So our matrix cannot be invertible by that theorem. Uh, so that is how the proof works here. All right, next theorem. So again, I'm just using capital F for any field. So usually it's gonna be real numbers, sometimes complex, and sometimes ZP. Those are the three choices for the field F. So if a lambda is an eigenvalue, uh, x is an eigenvector, you can take any integer n but it needs to be positive. So we're gonna write the positive integers as z plus. So that's gonna be zero, one, two, three, etc. So that's positive integers. So that's the hypothesis conclusion. Then lambda to the nth power is an eigen value of a to the nth power. And x remains an eigenvector. Oh, I better not allow zero into z, because that won't be true. All right, so we're gonna go for a quick proof. So we're going to suppose, have I used this weird half dollar sign for suppose yet? So that just means suppose. So we're gonna suppose that AX equals lambda X, that's what it means for A, lambda, and X to be eigenvalue, eigenvector, and matrix. So we're just supposing what that theorem uh, uh, assumes in the hy hypothesis. And now the conclusion, we're gonna try to prove the conclusion. So what I'm going to do is, let's multiply on the left by A to the N minus one. So I'm multiplying the left well, let's just multiply and left by a. We'll just do a to the first power. So 
So remember, multiplication is not commutative, so you cannot multiply on both sides. So I get a squared x equals lambda squared. Oh no, not lambda squared. A lambda x. There we go. All right. Why am I allowed to commute lambda and a? Well, this is because lambda is a scalar, that lets me commute. So I can't commute everything, but I can commute scalars as much as I want. All right, what, how, what can I rewrite instead of ax? What can I write there instead? Lambda x. Lambda x. It's right there. That's what we supposed. So ax is lambda x. Oh, look at that. Lambda squared x. All right, so we just showed for n is 2, this works. All I do is instead of multiply by a on the left, we'll multiply by a to the n, or a to the n minus 1, and then get our conclusion. So I can keep doing the same thing again and again and again with a.